Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving interference by division of amplitude. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. So we'll start by doing two worked examples for optical path difference, and then we'll look at one worked example for phase changes on reflection. So question one for optical path difference says that a glass block of refractive index 1.5 is surrounded by air. Rays of light pass from A to B and from C to D as shown. So you can see the ray from A to B goes purely through the glass block only, and then the ray from C to D involves travelling through air, then the glass block, and then air again. And part A says to state the geometric path length AB. Well, the geometric path length is simply the distance travelled from A to B, so that's going to be the length of the block there, 120 millimetres. So we can write down L, the geometric path length, is equal to 120 millimetres. Part B says to calculate the optical path length AB. Well, remember the optical path length is equal to the refractive index of the denser material times the geometric path length. So we could write that the optical path length is the same as N glass times L, because glass is our denser medium here, and we're told the refractive index of the glass in the question is 1.5. So we have 1.5 times 120 from part A, and if you put that into your calculator or just do it in your head, you should get an answer of 180 millimetres. Part C says, what is the geometric path length CD? Well, if we look back at the picture, the geometric path length from C to D is simply just the total distance travelled from C to D. So we have 50 millimetres through the air, and then 120 millimetres through the glass block, and then another 50 millimetres through air. So we could write this down as L is equal to 50 plus 120 plus 50, which is equal to 220 millimetres. And lastly, part D says to calculate the optical path length CD. Well, just like we did in part B, the optical path length is the same as the refractive index times the geometric path length. Well, if we look back at the picture, we've essentially got N air times the 50 millimetres, which is just going to be 1 times 50 millimetres, which is 50 millimetres, plus the N glass times the L in the block, so that's the 1.5 times 120 millimetres, plus the N air times the 50 millimetres again. So writing all of that down, we have 50 plus N glass times L plus 50, which is equal to 50 plus 180 plus 50, and that's the same as 280 millimetres. Question 2 says a hollow air-filled glass block is 150 millimetres long. The refractive index of the glass is 1.5 and rays of light pass from A to B and from C to D as shown. So you can see the rays of light from A to B just pass purely through the glass block. And because this is a hollow block, this is air inside here, so the ray of light from C to D passes through glass first of all, then air, then glass again. And part A says to calculate the optical path length AB. Well remember optical path length is the same as the geometric path length times the refractive index, so we can write N glass times L, and we're told the refractive index of the glass in the question here is 1.5. So we have 1.5 times the length L of the block, which is 150 millimetres. And if you put that into your calculator or just do it in your head, you should get an answer of 225 millimetres. Part B says to calculate the optical path length CD. Well, just like in question 1D, we need to think about the refractive index at each point along the journey here from C to D. So first of all, because the block has a length of 150 millimetres and this section that's cut out is 110 millimetres, then that leaves a difference of 40 millimetres, which is given at the sides here. So if these two sides are both equal in length, then that means they're going to be half of 40 millimetres each, which is 20 millimetres. So we could say for the optical path length from C to D, we're going to have refractive index of the glass times this 20 millimetres, plus the refractive index of air, which is just 1, times this length of 110 millimetres, plus the refractive index of the glass again times the 20 millimetres. So writing all of that down, we have N glass L plus 110 plus N glass L is equal to 1.5 times 20 plus 110 plus 1.5 times 20, and if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 170 millimetres. Lastly, part C says calculate the optical path difference between rays A, B and C, D. Well, we've already calculated the optical path lengths of each, and the optical path difference is just the difference between the two. So we just need to take the smaller one away from the bigger one. So we can write the optical path difference is equal to 225 from part A, minus 170 millimetres from part B, which gives you an answer of 55 millimetres. We'll now do one worked example for phase changes on reflection. So in the one and only question here, it says a perspex block reflects two rays of light from different surfaces as shown. So the length of the block is 50 millimetres, and we've got ray X reflecting off the first surface and ray Y reflecting off the second surface. It then says the perspex block has a refractive index of 1.47 and a thickness of 50 millimetres. Assume both rays have near normal incidence. Part A says to state the phase change undergone by each ray on reflection. Well, if we think about ray X first of all, it's going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium, i.e. from air to perspex, so that means on reflection this ray X is going to undergo a pi phase change. So we could write that ray X undergoes a phase change of pi radians. 
Whereas for ray Y reflecting off this second surface, notice how at this surface it would be going from perspex into air, so that would be going from a more dense medium into a less dense medium, which means there's going to be no phase change at this surface. So we can say that ray Y undergoes no phase change. Lastly, part B says to calculate the optical path difference between the rays. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the optical path difference. We know the refractive index is 1.47 for the perspex, and we know the geometrical path difference is equal to 50 times 2, which is equal to 100 millimetres. And we can look back at the picture to see why this is the case. So if you look at the picture here, you can see the only difference in the distance travelled between ray X and ray Y is the distance travelled within the block itself. So ray Y undergoes this extra 50 millimetres along to here, and then an extra 50 millimetres back to this point. And then it will have the same distance back which ray X does. So that means that ray Y is travelling a further 100 millimetres than ray X, and it just so happens that this is through the block. So writing down our equation for optical path difference, we can write the optical path difference is equal to n times the geometric path difference. And substituting in the numbers, we have 1.47 times 100. Just remember this is in millimetres here. So if you do this in your head or in a calculator, you should get an answer of 147 millimetres. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.